Okay, welcome to part two, where we're going to continue analyzing NMR spectroscopy. Now, we left off looking at this spectrum of ethanol. So just to get started, let us draw ethanol out to see how many hydrogens there are and how they differ and appear in different places on the spectrum. Now, in NMR spectroscopy, we talk about different hydrogen environments. Hydrogens that are in a different place in the molecule will experience a different magnetic field. So for example, these three hydrogens are equivalent. They're part of one environment and they appear in this first peak here. So we call that, uh, so let's have that red color here, CH3. Um, they require a slightly strong magnetic field around one ppm, one parts per million. Watch part one for an explanation of parts per million. And because the hydrogens um, have electrons near it, that affects how they experience the magnetic field. Now, we will get another peak for this hydrogen here. And that is the OH, this little peak here at 2.5. Because oxygen is more electronegative, it pulls electrons towards it. Uh, and hydrogen is left bare with not so many electrons around it. So it actually needs a weaker magnetic field to reach the resonance state. And finally, we have the third hydrogen environment, which is here, the CH2 group. Okay. Now, it feels it needs an even weaker magnetic field because it is also close to the oxygen uh, over here. Okay. Now the interesting thing about NMR spectroscopy is that it gives you how many hydrogens there are per environment and that it does that by doing an integration. Okay. You don't have to do it. It does, the machine does it itself. So if you know mathematics, integration is the area under the peak. And if you do the integration, the machine will tell you, well, there's three hydrogens with in this particular environment. Whereas here, there is only one, and here there's two. And that will give us a lot of useful information about what the structure is. Are there any branches? What functional groups are there? Now, talking about functional groups, if we scroll down to the data booklet supplied by IB, it tells you where you can find different functional groups. For example, a CH3 group, far away from any electronegative elements will appear between 0.9 and 1. If we scroll back up, that is where we found our CH3 group. Now, the OH group is quite broad, but um, it is between 1 and 6. That really depends if it's of the presence of other elements, electronegative elements around it. So we see it at 2.5. And a CH2 group next to an oxygen um, is this one here. And it's 3.3 .3 to 3.7. And in fact, as we can see in ethanol, it is in 3.7. So using the data booklet and where the peaks are, you can identify functional groups that are present and you can identify how many of each hydrogen there are. For example, if we integrated this peak of OH and we found two, that would mean there's two alcohol groups. In this case, there's only one because it is ethanol. It's not a diol. Okay. So this is the end of part two. In part three, we're going to be comparing two isomers, pentan 2 on and pentan 3 on And we will see the significance of NMR. Why is such a powerful tool for organic chemists. Thank you very much for listening.